Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie. Today, we're going to be talking about some YA releases that are coming out in June 2023. I'm really excited, uh, so let's get started. First off, we have a strong book. It is The Crooked Mark. This comes out June 20th. It's by Linda Cow. It is their first their debut novel, and I'm really excited about it. It sounds interesting on the cover, as you can see. It's pretty cool. So it is a dark and sinister YA novel about a teen boy who must hunt down people with the devil's mark, um, and that includes a girl that he's actually fallen for. 17-year-old Matthew Watts knows that some forces of good aren't the only ones at work. Uh, the devil Lucifer himself can mark a soul about to pass on, sending it back to the land of the living to carry out the evil will that is Lucifer's will. So Matt has grown up kind of skipping from town to town with his father. Uh, they're hunting anybody that has this devil's mark, and they have really one purpose, and that's to exterminate them all. Uh, after helping his father for years, Matt takes on his own mission. Ray Winter is a miracle survivor, but when Matt starts to fall in love with her and to make friends for the first time in his life, he's not sure or who to believe anymore. How can somebody like Ray, someone who's thoughtful, kind, smart, be an ag agent of death and evil with the reality of fantasy and reality and myth and paranoia all blurred, Matt confronts a awful truth. What if the devil's mark actually doesn't exist? So this sounds really interesting. It's called The Crooked Mark by Linda Cow. Next on our list today, we have Garden of the Cursed. Uh, this is a part a, of a series of books that will be called The Garden of the Cursed, and it comes out also on June 20th. This is by Katie Rose Poole. I literally just finished Hannah Witten's uh, Fox Love King, and this kind of has some similar vibes. It's like a lot of courtship and murder and hiding and agents spying on people. Anyway, so... We have a place called Evergarden. Our main protagonist, Marlo Briggs, has fleed from this main place into a muck-filled canal of marshes, and they've made a name for themselves as a curse breaker in Carraza City. But no matter how many cases that she's solved, she's still haunted by the mystery of her mother's disappearance. When Adrius Falcrest, Marlo's old friend and scion of the Carraza's most affluent spell-making families, asked her to help break a life-threatening curse, Marlo wants nothing to do with the guy who spurned her a year ago. But a new lead in her mother's case makes Marlo realize that the only way to get answers she desperately seeks is to return to Evergarden and also faking a love affair with Adrius Falcrest, and that's to avoid drawing suspicions from the five families, which sounds very sinister. As the investigation draws Marlo deeper into a web of deadly secrets and powerful enemies, a shocking truth emerges. Adrius's curse and her mother's disappearance might be the clues for an even larger conspiracy at hand, and it can unravel the very foundations of Carassa and magic itself. Woo! The drama! So this is called Garden of the Cursed. This is by Katie Rose Poole. It sounds really interesting. Next up on our list today, we have The Grimoire of Grave Fates. This comes out June 6th. This is an interesting book. So what we have is a academy called the Galileo, the Galileo Academy for Extraordinary. And somebody, one of the professors has been killed. His name is, <laughs> it's the magic history professor, Septius Dropwort. I love that name. So we are viewing every, I think it might be a chapter. I, I could be making assumptions here, but every, there's 18 viewpoints here from different students from all across the globe, different cultures, different backgrounds, um, investigating or putting in their two cents on this whole murder mystery. 
in a fat fantasy setting. Not only that, it's 18 different authors contributing to each chapter, which is kind of wild. So our, I know for me, I already have a hard time when there's like a million different characters and each chapter is like a viewpoint and we're like moving back and forth and trying to do a murder mystery. This will be very different because it's written by 18 different people. So the voice is going to be different. The style is going to be different. So we'll see how that works out. This is for grade level seven through nine. I am i don't actually recognize many of the authors here. So let me just read off a few. We have Kat Cho, Hafsa Faisal, uh, Darcy Little Badger, Cam, Montgo Cam Montgomery, and Julian Winters, Kayla Whaley. So lots of different people. Uh, so I'm excited. I might pick this one up because I really like the concept. It has a 3.6 on Goodreads. So we're all trying to figure out the mysterious death of Septius Dropwort. This is the Grimoire of Grave Fates by many authors. All right, our next book is Part of Your World, a Twisted Tale graphic novel. I actually have, and this is a hardcover, by the way. I think the paperback has already been out. So we have, I actually own, and I can't reach it right now. It's literally right, it's right there. Uh, so I have The Fairest of All, which is kind of the uh, evil queen from Snow White's perspective. So this isn't really uh, Ursula's perspective, but it's, it's a tale about what if Ursula actually did defeat Ariel the first time around. And Ariel's coming back with a vengeance. It's really interesting. I like it. So Ursula is even more powerful. She's trying to spread her evil everywhere, destroying different places in Ariel's home. And Ariel is trying to uprise again. And Ursula gets wind of Ariel being around. So can Ariel finally defeat Ursula. It's a graphic novel, by the way. Uh, so this is by Stephanie Kate Strom and Kelly Matthews is the illustrator. This is part of your world and this comes out June 13. Next on our list is St. Juniper's Folly. So we did talk about this in a previous episode because they pushed it, but it's finally out. It came out June 6. This is by Alex Crespo. So St. Juniper's Folly is a nearby woods. We have two, three characters, sorry, that we're following here. Jamie is returning to the Vermont town of St. Juniper, and that means he's kind of coming back to a past that he really wanted to avoid this whole time, eight years to be exact. Um, so he was shuttled around foster homes for many years, and he kind of wants to make a fresh start now. Everybody is gossiping, though, in town, of course, as one does. Uh, everybody knows his business, and he's got reminders everywhere. He tries to seek out solitude in the nearby woods, St. Jun Juniper's Folly. And the thing is, he just doesn't return. We have Theo, who um, he thinks that being in the city of St. Juniper City probably more like a town. Um, he knows that there's like a lot more out there. He wants to adventure forth, but he's kind of too scared to do it. His senior year is going to be kind of like the rest of senior year. It's pretty dull, claustrophobic. He hates it. That's until he wanders into the folly and stumbles on a haunted house. And there is this handsome boy trapped in this haunted house. Like he's physically trapped, like he can't get out. We have Taylor who believes that St. Juniper is kind of a mystery town. She tries to practice magic that her dad has banned from the house after her mom, an accomplished witch, suddenly died. Uh, but without someone to guide her, she's floundering now. And then we have this wide-eyed teenager barging into her life, rambling about this haunted house and a trapped boy. And he's like, I need a witch. And so this is about all three of these guys and how the folly is going to bring out all of these town hidden ghosts, but also how they are drawn together. Can they face these demons to forge a bond strong enough to escape the folly's shadows? This sounds really fun. It's a queer haunted house story. This is St. Juniper's Folly by Alex Crespo. Next on our list today is Starlings. It's got a gorgeous cover. It's very blue, very purple, super stunner. It's a dark YA fantasy. It's great for people who liked House of Hollow, which I did. 
very good YA book. I was actually stunned. So the fact that it's similar to House of Hollow makes me want to grab it. So we have Kit's father always told her that he had no family, but his sudden death revealed the truth. Surprise, as that always happens. Uh, Kit has a grandmother she never knew she had, Agatha Starling, and an invitation to visit her father's hometown, Rosemont. And Rosemont is picture perfect. We have famed eternal roses that bloom all year. Wow. Cool. The downtown is kind of straight out of 1950s. There's even a cute guy to show Kit around. How perfect. But the thing is, the longer that Kit's there, the stranger it feels. The Starling fam family is revered, but there's kind of something off about how the Starling women seem to be at the center of the, all of the town's important history. Ooh. Um, and as welcoming as the locals are, Kit can't shake the feeling that there's something that they're all hiding from her. Agatha is so happy to finally meet her only granddaughter, and the town is truly charming, but Kit can't help but wonder if something if everything is so great in Rosemont, why did her dad leave in the first place? I actually probably know the plot of this story already. I mean, it's pretty it's glaring, right? But all of the in-between pieces are what matters most. And if it's similar to House of Hollow, I'm up for it. It's called Starlings. This is by Amanda Linsmeyer, which I didn't say. Whoops. And this comes out June 27th. I got really excited about the cover. What can I say? Speaking of covers, uh, this next one's really good. Again, you can see it here. It's called Those We Drown. This is by Amy Goldsmith. And this comes out June 27th as well. It's an ocean-drenched atmospheric horror debut. Ooh, perfect for summer, hopefully. So it should have been the trip of a lifetime. When Liv lands an all-expenses-paid opportunity to study aboard the luxury cruise ship, the EOS, for, some, some, for the semester, she can't believe her luck, especially since it will offer her the chance to spend time with Will, her ex-best friend, who's barely spoken to her since the night their relationship changed forever. But as soon as she steps on board, Liv realizes just how out of depth she is. With Will, with the rest of the semester students, including the brittle and beautiful Constantine, who may be hiding his own ties to the Aos, and most of all, with the Sirens, three glamorous and mysterious influencers who seem to have the run of the ship. Liv quickly discovers that the only reason she was invited to join the trip was because another girl disappeared shortly after enrolling, and no one seems to know what happened to her. When further disappearances rock the ship and strange creatures begin haunting Liv's dreams, she wonders, is Aos hiding a dark secret within its shadowy decks? The truth will come at a price, only how much is Liv willing to pay? Cute. So this is called Those We Drown by Amy Goldsmith. We have five more books on this YA list. I'm really excited because this one is published by Wednesday Books. They're pretty good. It's called Where Echoes Die. This is by Courtney Gold. Two sisters travel to an isolated Arizona town to investigate its connection to their mother's death, but uncover more than they bargained for in the supernatural thriller. So Beck Bershing has been adrift since the death of her mother, understandable, she was a brilliant but troubled investigative reporter. She can't stop herself from slipping into memories of happier days, longing for a time when things were normal. So when a mysterious letter in her mother's handwriting arrives in the mail that reads, Come and find me, pointing to the small town at the center of her last investigation, Beck hopes that it might hold the answers. They arrive in Back Ravel, Arizona. It's clear that something's off. There are no cars, no cemeteries, no churches. The town is a mix of dilapidated military structures and new shining buildings, all overseen by a gleaming treatment center high on a plateau. No one seems to remember when they got there, and when Beck digs deeper into the town's enigmatic leader and his daughter Avery, she begins to suspect that they know more than they're letting on. As Beck and her sister search for answers about their mother, she and Avery are increasingly drawn 
together, and their unexpected connection brings up emotions Beck has fought to keep buried. Beck is desperate to hold on to the way things used to be, but when she starts losing, losing herself in back ravel it, and its connection to her mother, she risks losing her way back out. So it's a haunting desert town. I haven't read one of those in a really long time. It's about grief, uh, how not letting go weighs you down, first loves, and the bond between sisters. Lots of themes here. This is called Where Echoes Die. This is by Courtney Gold. Next, we have The Wicked Unseen. This is by Gigi Griffiths. We have a new girl in town. Audrey arrives in rural Pennsylvania. It's very clear she's not going to fit in. After all, her nose ring, her horror movie obsession, and her family's Ouija board collection aren't likely to endear her to a town convinced there's a secret satanic cult conducting rituals in the nearby woods. No, it's not. When the preacher's daughter and Audrey's crush Ellie goes missing on Halloween weekend, the town is quick to point fingers in her direction with the cops busy harassing her family for being non-believers and everyone else is convinced demons are to blame, Audrey realizes she might be the only person who can find her friend. But the deeper Audrey digs, the weirder it gets. Has Ellie fallen victim to a satanic ritual or is the town's obsession with the occult covering up something even more sinister? This actually kind of reminds me... I never can remember this video game's name. We used to do horror video game nights, and this kind of has a very similar vibe to it. This is called The Wicked Unseen. This is by Gigi Griffiths. Next on our list, we this one's not terribly dark, but it sounds really interesting. It is a sus, it's a suspense novel. It's called Wolf Pack. It's by Amelia Brunskill. Nine girls bound together in a beautiful, virtuous haven wood, a refuge from an unsafe world. Then there are eight, one of them gone, departed with no warning. Did this member of their pack stray willingly, or did something more sinister occur? The girls seek answers, not knowing if they should be angry or frightened, or perhaps they should be both. So this is by Little Brown Books for Young Readers. You can see the cover is really stunning. Um, it's about a group of teenage girls who live in a cult, and it's about paranoia, suspicion, uh, especially when one of them goes missing. So this is Wolfpack. This is by Amelia Brunskill, and it came out June 13. Next, two more left. You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight. This is by Kaylin Bayron, and it comes out June 20th. Charity has a summer job of her dreams, playing the, quote, final girl at Camp Mirror Lake. Guests pay to be scared in this full contact terror game. As Charity and her summer crew recreate scenes from classic slasher films, The Curse of Camp Mirror Lake, the more realistic the fear, the better for business. But the last weekend of the season, Charity's co-workers begin actually disappearing. And when one ends up dead, Charity's role as the final girl suddenly becomes too real. If Charity and her girlfriend, Bessie, hope to survive the night, they'll need to figure out what this killer is after. As they unravel the bloody history of the real Mirror Lake, Charity discovers that there may be more to the story than she ever sus suspected. So this is You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight. This is by Kaylin Bayron. And our final book today is You Won't Believe Me. It is by Sin Balog, and it, came, and it comes out June 27th. This is a chilling thriller. Willow is alone, confined to a bed with restraints. She can't remember how she got there or how long she's been there. An old lady appears in her room to feed her twice a day. Granny doesn't talk, but Willow can hear thumping from somewhere beyond the door. It's not Granny's shuffling steps. It's too loud to be Granny's cat is someone or something there. Then Granny's cat dies in Willow's room, and Granny follows a few days later. Willow will do anything to survive, but freeing herself from her bed is only the beginning. Because there is something else in the house. Who is this mysterious teen who calls himself Elijah? And is he the reason she's a hostage or the key to her escape? This sounds really intriguing and claustrophobic, and I kind of, like, I think I'll check it out because I kind of hate it. It makes me feel, ugh, it freaks me out. So... It's very similar to some Stephen King reads and Natasha Preston. This is You Won't Believe Me by Sin 
Balog. And that finishes up all of the YA reads coming out in June of 2023. Make sure to tune in Wednesday and Friday for more dark reads and to check out our socials for all the dark reads you could possibly imagine and our Amazon live channel at amazon.com slash live slash dark side of the library. You can check out our show notes if any of these books were of interest to you or the description down below also has those things. Um, and make sure to give us a rating. Follow us if you do enjoy this kind of stuff, all the creepy reads coming out for this month. Thank you so much for watching slash listening, and hopefully you'll have a creeptastic rest of your week.